In this section, we will talk about the renal circulation. Blood vessels of kidneys are highly specialized to facilitate the functions of nephrons in the formation of urine. In the adults, during resting conditions, both the kidneys receive 1,300 milliliters of blood per minute, or about 26% of the cardiac output. Maximum blood supply to kidneys has got the functional significance. Renal arteries supply blood to the kidneys. Let's discuss the renal blood vessels. Renal artery arises directly from abdominal aorta and enters the kidney through the hilus while passing through renal sinus. The renal artery divides into many segmental arteries. Segmental artery subdivides into interlobar arteries. Interlobar artery passes in between the medullary pyramids. At the base of the pyramid, it turns and runs parallel to the base of pyramid-forming arcuate artery. Each arcuate artery gives rise to interlobular arteries. Interlobular arteries run through the renal cortex, perpendicular to arcuate artery. From each interlobular artery, numerous afferent arterioles arise. Afferent arteriole enters the Bauman capsule and forms glomerular capillary tuft. After entering the Bauman capsule, the afferent arteriole divides into four or five large capillaries. Each large capillary divides into small glomerular capillaries, which form the loops and the capillary loops unite to form the efferent arteriole, which leaves the Bowman capsule. Efferent arterioles form a second capillary network called paratubular capillaries, which surround the tubular portions of the nephrons. Thus, the renal circulation forms a portal system by the presence of two sets of capillaries, namely, glomerular capillaries and peritubular capillaries. This is renal vein, while this is ureter. Now, as we have discussed that, renal artery arises directly from abdominal aorta and enters the kidney through the hilus. While passing through renal sinus, the renal artery divides into many segmental arteries segmental artery subdivides into interlobar arteries. Interlobar artery passes in between the medullary pyramids. At the base of the pyramid, it turns and runs parallel to the base of pyramid, forming arcuate artery. Each arcuate artery gives rise to interlobular arteries. Interlobular arteries run through the renal cortex, perpendicular to arcuate artery. From each interlobular artery, numerous afferent arterioles arise. Afferent arteriole enters the Bowman capsule and forms glomerular capillary tuft. After entering the Bowman capsule, the afferent arteriole divides into four or five large capillaries. Each large capillary divides into small glomerular capillaries, which form the loops and the capillary loops unite to form the efferent arteriole, which leaves the Bowman capsule. Efferent arterioles form a second capillary network called paratubular capillaries, which surround the tubular portions of the nephrons. Thus, the renal circulation forms a portal system by the presence of two sets of capillaries, namely glomerular capillaries and paratubular capillaries. Peritubular capillaries are found around the tubular portion of cortical nephrons only. The tubular portion of juxtamedullary nephrons is supplied by some specialized capillaries called vasa recta. These capillaries are straight blood vessels, hence the name vasa recta. Vasa recta arise directly from the efferent arteriole of the juxtamedullary nephrons and run parallel to the renal tubule, into the medulla, and ascend up towards the cortex. Paratubular capillaries and vasa recta drain into the venous system. 
Vena system starts with paratubular venules and continues as interlobular veins, arcuate veins, interlobar veins, segmental veins, and finally the renal vein. Renal vein leaves the kidney through the hilus and joins inferior vena cava. Blood flow to kidneys is measured by using plasma clearance of paraaminohepuric acid. Blood flow is regulated mainly by autoregulation. The nerves innervating renal blood vessels do not have any significant role in this. Do you know what is autoregulation? Autoregulation is the intrinsic ability of an organ to regulate its own blood flow. Autoregulation is present in some vital organs in the body, such as brain, heart, and kidneys. It is highly significant and more efficient in kidneys. Renal autoregulation is important to maintain the glomerular filtration rate. The glomerular filtration rate is defined as the volume of filtrate that forms every minute by the activities of the 2 million glomerulae in kidney. Blood flow to kidneys remains normal even when the mean arterial blood pressure vary widely between 60 millimeter of mercury and 180 millimeter of mercury. This helps to maintain normal GFR. Two mechanisms are involved in renal autoregulation, myogenic response, and other is tubuloglomerular feedback. Let's discuss the myogenic response or myogenic feedback. Whenever the blood flow to kidneys increases, it stretches the elastic wall of the afferent arteriole. Stretching of the vessel wall increases the flow of calcium ions from extracellular fluid into the cells. The influx of calcium ions leads to the contraction of smooth muscles in afferent arteriole, which causes constriction of afferent arteriole. So the blood flow is decreased. Now let's discuss the tubuloglomerular feedback. Macula densa plays an important role in tubuloglomerular feedback, which controls the renal blood flow and glomerulus filtration rate. Tubuloglomerular feedback is the mechanism that regulates glomerulus filtration rate through renal tubule and macula densa. This is macula densa, while this is afferent arteriole. Macula densa of juxtaglomerular apparatus in the terminal portion of thick ascending limb is sensitive to the sodium chloride in the tubular fluid. When the glomerular filtrate passes through the terminal portion of thick ascending segment, macula densa acts like a sensor. It detects the concentration of sodium chloride in the tubular fluid and accordingly alters the glomerular blood flow and glomerulus filtration rate. Macula densa detects the sodium chloride concentration through sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. When glomerulus filtration rate increases, concentration of sodium chloride increases in the filtrate. Macula densa releases adenosine from ATP. As ATP is released, it converts to ADP, then AMP, and then into adenosine. Adenosine acts on afferent arteriole through adenosine A1 receptors. Adenosine causes constriction of afferent arteriole. So the blood flow through glomerulus decreases, leading to decrease in glomerulus filtration rate. There are several other factors which increase or decrease the sensitivity of tubuloglomerular feedback. Factors increasing the sensitivity of tubuloglomerular feedback are adenosine, thromboxane, prostaglandin E2, and hydroxyacosatronoic acid. Factors decreasing the sensitivity of tubuloglomerular feedback are atrial natriuretic peptide, prostaglandin I2, 
cyclic AMP, and nitrous oxide. Now what happens when GFR decreases? Well, then concentration of sodium chloride decreases in the filtrate. Macula densa secretes prostaglandin E2, bradykinin, and renin. Prostaglandin E2 and bradykinin cause dilatation of afferent arteriole. Renin induces the formation of angiotensin II, which causes constriction of efferent arteriole. The dilatation of afferent arteriole and constriction of efferent arteriole leads to increase in glomerular blood flow and GFR. This was all about the introduction to renal system. Stay tuned to scotia.com for more precise and knowledge stuff videos.